Hi, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us. This is the FAA Aviation Workforce Development Pre-Application Technical Assistance Webinar. I am Jasmine Gale. I am the lead grant officer for the Aviation Workforce Development Grant Program. And alongside me today is Cynthia Nielsen. She serves as our program grant program analyst. Cynthia, can you introduce yourself, please? Yes, yeah, sorry, I was in the middle of something. Hello, everyone. My name is Cynthia Nelson. As Jasmine just indicated, I am the AWD um, grant analyst. I support her. And when you are referring to most of the emails in the mailbox, that's myself or Jasmine or one of the technical monitors responding. So welcome, and we look forward to serving you. Jasmine, I'm going to go back off the camera. I have to get my background up. So sorry no about problem. that. No problem. Thank you, okay. Cynthia. Okay. <laughs> also, we have today Brian Copeland. He serves as our branch manager for the Grants Division. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, looking forward to um, this discussion about the, uh, the NOFO and the grant opportunity announcement. I uh, just want to let you know I'm new to this office. I just started in March. So I'm looking forward to um, your questions, but also looking forward to working through this grant um, in the future and the exciting opportunities and exciting work that you're going to be doing, educating the maintenance and pilot workforce of the future. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. We also have the pleasure of having Miranda Haywood. She serves as our division director. Good afternoon, everyone. We are so excited about these webinars that we're doing um, because this is just an excellent opportunity opportunity for us to provide you with some great insight um, to help you prepare to apply for our aviation workforce grant. So we're going to encourage you to ask as many questions as you will, and uh, we look forward to a wonderful session. Good luck, everyone. Thanks, Jess. Thank you. All right, so during this process, let me, um, I'm going to turn off my camera so you guys can see the full screen during this presentation. All right, so during this process, if you do have any questions, um, not for the web webinar, more so for the application process, you want to make sure you email our AWD mailbox at awd-grants at FAA.gov. Myself or Cynthia are the face and administrators behind that box. So we will be answering any questions you have outside of this webinar during the application process. So we do have a full agenda today. And the goal of this webinar is to provide potential applicants with an overview for both NOFOs and provide an opportunity to ask questions. So during the presentation, head over to the Q&A box below and ask questions, which will be answered at the end of the webinar. Cynthia will be responding to some of the questions live. So be sure to head over to that box and ask questions and you shall receive some of the answers from Cynthia. Otherwise, I will answer all questions at the end of the webinar. As a reminder, the Notice of Funding Opportunity is currently published on grants.gov and is the official document detailing the requirements for applying for the aircraft pilots and aviation maintenance technical workers competitive grants. This presentation is an overview and is not all inclusive of the NOFOs. As an applicant, you are responsible for reviewing the NOFOs in its entirety to ensure the application submission meets the NOFO requirements. Congress authorized the Aviation Workforce Development Grant Program in the FAA Reauthorization Act of 2018 under Public Law 115-254, Section 625. The Reauthorization Act of 2018 addresses the projected shortages of the aircraft pilots and 
maintenance technical workers in the aviation industry by directing the establishment of an aviation workforce development grant programs. Under the authorizing legislation, the secretary may exercise discretion in selecting awards to ensure the selection will allow participation from a diverse collection of public and private schools in rural, urban, and suburban schools. The legislation does not require cost share of matching contribution for this program. The AWD has two grant programs under its umbrella, the Aircraft Pilots Program and the Aviation Maintenance Technical Workers Program. Through the award of the Aircraft Pilot Grant, the FAA will assist in providing meaningful educational experiences designed to prepare high school students throughout the nation to become aircraft pilots, aerospace engineers, or unmanned aircraft system operators to support the related professional development of teachers. Through the award of the Aviation Maintenance Technical Workers Grant, the FAA will assist in expanding the U.S. Aviation Maintenance Technical Workers workforce. The program aims to provide meaningful educational experiences to, to stimulate interest and encourage students throughout the nation to prepare them to enter into this career field. The program also supports activities to facilitate the transition to careers in aviation maintenance, including members of the armed forces. By advancing equality across the federal government, we can create opportunities for the improvement of communities that have been historically underserved. Consistent with the federal policy and the authorizing legislation, the AWD program will further benefit the public by advancing equality. The following is the summary of funding and the projected project duration for both programs. FAA anticipates annual available funds for FY23 totaling $4.5 million for the aircraft pilot program to fund a minimum of nine awards. Aviation maintenance will fund a minimum of 18 awards with annual funds totaling 9 million for the grant program. The period of performance for both programs will be up to 24 months there is a ceiling of $500,000 per year, but there is no floor for round three. Any applicant that exceeds 12 months budget period or does not adhere to the ceiling will be deemed ineligible and will not be considered for funding. So to break this down just a little further, if you are applying for either grant program, you want to ensure that your requested federal funding amount does not exceed $500,000. Nor do you want to, you also want to ensure that when you submit your budget, your budget will be for a 12-month period. And your project narrative will describe what you plan to achieve within the, tw the 24 months. Keep in mind that the deadline to apply for either NOFO is August 16th. Eligible projects under aircraft pilot must create and deliver curriculum to provide high school students with meaningful aviation education that is designed to prepare the students to become aircraft pilots, aerospace engineers, or unmanned aircraft system operators, or support the professional development of teachers using the curriculum. 
applicants may utilize existing training curriculum as well as provide such curriculum and ensure provide such curriculum is consistent with the eligible requirements of the NOFO. Eligible projects under the aviation maintenance technical workers must establish new educational programs that teach technical skills used in the aviation maintenance, including purchasing equipment or to improve existing programs. Enhanced aviation maintenance technical education or aviation maintenance industry workforce. Establish scholarships or apprenticeships for individuals pursuing employment in the aviation maintenance industry. Support outreach about careers in the aviation maintenance industry to primary, secondary, post-secondary school students and communities that are under that are underrepresented in the industry. Support transition to careers in the aviation maintenance including members of the armed forces. Support educational opportunities related to aviation maintenance in economically disadvantaged geographic areas. Additional uh, eligibility requirements are as follows. Applicants are required Two, one, use E-Verify to confirm employment eligibility, provide and provide proof of eligibility. It is the applicant's responsibility to ensure that all accreditations or certifications are attached to the application. So you wanna ensure that you thoroughly review section C, eligibility information, subsection proof of eligibility. This section and subsection are the same for both aircraft pilots and aviation maintenance. So I'll give you a second to look over this screen. However, the same information is outlined in subsection and section C, subsection proof of eligibility. An eligible applicant is identified per the legislative authority. Only those eligible entities listed in the NOFO can apply for the related funding opportunity. So for aircraft pilots, an eligible entity is an aircraft carrier or labor unions representing aircraft pilots, an accredited institution of higher education, secondary school or high school, flight school that provides flight training or holds a pilot school certificate, state or local government entity. For aviation maintenance technical workers, eligible entity is an a holder of certificate issued under part 21, 121, 135, or 145 of Title 14 Code of Federal Regulations, or a labor organization representing aviation maintenance workers, accredited higher institution of higher education, secondary school or high school, state or local government entity. While I did not read the references to the specific codes or titles in the law for each eligible entity, they are important to note. So please refer to the NOFO's eligible section, eligibility section for more guidance. And remember individuals are not eligible to apply under, under either NOFO. Additional eligibility requirements are as follows. Applicants are required to, again, use E-Verify to confirm employment eligibility. 
identify how employees qualify under section C, subsection one, by uploading proof of eligibility. Applicants must provide copies of accreditations and certifications and statement to which eligible category you are applying under and how you qualify. Ensure that each partner submits a letter of commitment, a signed agreement, and responsibilities. If an applicant submits a proposal without a letter of commitment and or agreement from each partner, the proposal will be deemed ineligible. Please note that applicants must be actively registered in SAM and that site is www.sam.gov. Per the 2 CFR 200.206A subsection 2, the FAA will check the Federal Award Performance and Integrity System, better known as FAFIS, at www.fapiis dot gov prior to award. Entities found to be debarred or suspended will automatically be considered ineligible from participating from either grant program. Requirements plus application and submission details are outlined on this slide and are also detailed in the NOFO. For the sake of time, I'm not going to read through this entire slide, but I will highlight a, a few key points. The NOFO is posted on grants.gov, and this is where you will find the application forms and instructions. Only applications submitted electronically through grants.gov will be considered for funding. The required documents are listed in the NOFO under Appendix 2. All attachments must be PDF file. The page length of the narrative is 10 pages. However, this does not include the cover letter. The cover letter should only be one page in addition to the project narrative. The narrative must be written in English using US dollars, double spaced, font 12 times New Roman, one inch margins, and page numbers must be included in the lower right corner. Again, reference the NOFO for specific instructions. The project, the program narrative must include headings in order to address each merit criterion stated in section E, application review information. If the proposal is not submitted in the aforementioned format, the application will be deemed ineligible. This slide will provide additional guidance for application and submission concerning a few mandatory forms. The application must include all required documentation, which we will discuss further on the next slide. The NOFA requires the following mandatory forms. So you have your application for federal assistance form, which is also known as SF-424 your project abstract summary form. This is where the applicant will one, describe the proposed work to be completed and how it achieve, it will achieve program goals. Two, it will state if the proposed activities are a complete project or part of a larger project, new project or existing project. The project narrative, we have a great sample that is outlined in Appendix 3. Format requirements were discussed on the previous slide, but again, the page limit for the project narrative is 10 pages. 
and this does not include the one page cover letter. If the narrative exceeds 10 pages, the application will be deemed ineligible. Funding requests include the following documents. So applications must include the budget information for non-construction programs, which is form SF424A, the budget narrative, which does have a two-page limit, the indirect cost rate proposal, if applicable, and the ACH vendor payment enrollment attachment form, which is also known as SF3881. So the additional, this slide will outline all the documents that are required in grants.gov for the AWD application package with mandatory, with mandatory forms and related attachments. The grants.gov application package not only includes the SF-424, the project narrative attachment form, the SF-424A, which is your budget form, your budget narrative attachment form. And again, that's a two page limit for your budget narrative. The SF-424B assurances of non-construction programs the project abstract summary form, the project site location form, key contact standard form, SFLLL, which is your lobbying form, attachment form, and this is listed again in appendix two. So all other attachments, there is an attachment form where you can list anything additional that you would like for us to know. Use the, again, so use the attachment forms to upload all other required documents. Please ensure that each attachment is uploaded with the appropriate document title. Be mindful not to exceed 50 characters in the file name. Otherwise, your attachment will be rejected by grants.gov. So that's 50 characters for your title. Additionally, grants.gov suggests limiting the file size of the entire grant application package, including all attachments to 200 MB. So that's 200 MB for your entire grant package. You will find this and more information on the file limitations at grants.gov. Again, please ensure that all documents are uploaded in PDF format. Other attachment forms should include your accreditation and your certifications, which is your proof of eligibility. You must include this document to support your eligibility. Two will be your letter of commitment and or agreement if you have partners. Three will be your cost policy statement. This must be signed by the AOR, which is your authorizing official. For your indirect cost rate agreement, if you are not using the 10% de minimis amount, you must have an uh, agreement attached to your application. Five will be your SF3881, which is your ACH vendor payment enrollment form. Six will be your audit and or financial statements. So we ask that you provide your most recent two-year financial statements and or audit. So the last would be other. You can use this to upload any additional information you feel is important to include in your application. Okay, so let's take a deeper dive into the funding request. The funding request. Applicants are required to submit a budget using S at the standard form SF four two four A. The requested budget 
may not exceed the ceiling of $500,000. Otherwise, the application will not be considered for funding. As previously mentioned, the period of performance is up to tw uh, 24 months. However, you're going to submit the budget for a 12 month period with an option to continue your project for a second year. The budget justification serves. So you will also attach your budget narrative, which is a two has a two page limit. And this budget will justify, will serve two, two purposes. One, it will explain the cost where estimated. And then two, you will justify the need for the cost. So the budget justification must be in alignment with your SF 424A, which includes a detailed narrative description for each itemized breakdown of all costs. The budget and the budget justification must clearly align in the project goals and objectives. The budget documents must also include the list of current federal grants. This is outlined in the NOFO. Participant support, which is would be an example, would be scholarships, maybe provided to a staff, which may be provided to eligible program participants would be your trainees participating in the Aviation Workforce Development Grant Program. There are funding restrictions included in both NOFOs as highlighted on this slide, but again, not all inclusive to the language outlined in the NOFO. However, it is important that you thoroughly read these sections carefully in each NOFO. All right, so the next two slides will provide a high level overview of the criterion for both programs. So for your aircraft pilots program, the project plan is worth up to 30 points and includes to the extent to which the applicant has demonstrated a clear and achievable plan to carry out the proposed project by including without limitation, a clear and well-organized description of the planned activities, objectives, performance goals, and measures. Two, the application resources and capabilities is worth up to 20 points and includes the extent to which the applicant has demonstrated organizational capability to carry out the proposed project plan by clearly demonstrating that the sufficient facilities, equipment, human and physical resources, are available to provide for students and teachers and or instructors recruitment, academic and career counseling, public outreach and activities, and otherwise demonstrated that sufficient resources are available to achieve the program goals. Three, four aircraft pilots is still project impact is worth up to 30 points and includes to the extent of an applicant's proposed project's impact in supporting the education and development of high school students or the related professional development of teachers. Four, project administration and monitoring is worth up to 20 points and includes to the extent of which the applicant has demonstrated a clear and achievable plan to control administrative expenses and a well-organized description of how the project activities will be monitored, assessed, and documented to determine to the extent to which performance goals and metrics will be achieved.
So the criterion is the same as aircraft pilots with the exception of criterion three, your project impact. So I'm going to skip to that slide, but one and two are the same as exactly the same as aircraft pilots. So as I mentioned on the previous slide, the criterion is the same for one and two. The only difference for aviation maintenance is project impact. And the which to the extent the application proposes impact is support, supporting the educational development of high school students or related to the professional development of teachers. Again, it is important that you review the NOFO carefully to ensure your application meets all of the requirements of the NOFO. The review and selection process consists of the initial screening and the technical evaluation review. The initial screening and, a tech and technical evaluation review process are intended to ensure that the grants officer makes a grant award recommendation to the selecting official in accordance with the criteria and consideration set forth in this NOFO and mandated by Congress. A final decision of funding is determined by the FAA selecting official. The grant officer will complete an initial screening of the applications. An application will be considered ineligible in if the applicant does not meet the following requirements as identified on this slide and detailed in the NOFO. After the application is submitted via grants.gov, the application goes through the, again, goes through the initial screening. Applicants must have an active registration in SAM. Applicants must be eligible in accordance to section C, eligible information. Applications must be complete and meet the format and page limitations as well as the ceiling plus project and budget requirements. The entity cannot be debarred or suspended. So again, there are two phases, the application that passes the initial screening by the grant officer as discussed on a previous slide will be reviewed by the technical evaluation team. After the application is reviewed by the team, the grant officer will be able to make a recommendation to the selecting official. Now, just let's take a closer look at this process. So this side is a continuation of the review and selection process and provides an overview of the adjectival ratings. All of this information is outlined in the NOFO in greater detail. Again, so once the initial screening is complete, applications will move forward to that technical evaluation review team. The technical evaluation review team will evaluate each application against each of the merit criterion set forth in section C of the NOFO. The team will assign an adjectival rating to each merit criterion from the adjectival rate rating table based upon the strengths, weaknesses, and risks identified. Each merit criterion will then receive a corresponding score set forth in the merit criterion points table, which is included in the NOFO. Based on the sum of the scores assigned to the individual merit criterion and over on overall 
adjectival rating will be assigned to the application set forth in the overall rating table as shown on this slide. And as you can see, any, any application that receives a below standard will not be considered for funding. The, the review and selection process will be based on the overall adjectival rating assigned by the technical evaluation team. After, after taking into account the other considerations set forth in both NOFOs for awards, the grant officer shall recommend applications for award to the selecting official who will then make a final decision. The FAA anticipates announcing recipients and making awards in the second quarter of 2024. After the initial screening and the technical evaluation review, the government may consider the following factors prior to final selection. One, the extent to which the project supports the policy objectives of the applicable executive orders, including without limitation to the executive order of January 20th, 2021 of advancing racial equality and support of the unserved communities through the federal government. Two, whether a project is located in a qualified opportunity zone designated pursuit of 26 USC 1400 Z-1. Three, economic distribution throughout the United States of the activities of the collective group of the award proposals. Four, consistent with the department's routes initiative. Five, for applicants with existing awards, FAA may consider award balances when making final funding decisions. And lastly, the availability of funds. The FAA AWD grants officer will notify the recipient's authorizing official or designated point of contact when selected for an award. Once that notification comes through, you will electronically sign and send the award documents to the official responsible to act on the behalf of the applicant named as the designated point of contact in the proposal. The awards made under this program are subject to the 2 CFR 200 uniform administrative requirements, cost principles, and audit requirements for federal awards. Awardee recip recip recipients of funds is cognizant of the executives, uh, executive, mm, my apologies, award, award recipients of the funds will, funds is cognizant of the exe execution of the government's award agreement. Notify in, uh, the grant officer will also notify ineligible applicants that have not been selected in writing via email as promptly as possible after the determination has been made. Grant recipients must adhere to all administrative and national policy requirements, including but not limited to all local, state, and federal laws and directives, including national policies, identified in the required assurances. It will also adhere again to the two CFR two, part 200. 
So please reference Appendix 3 of the NOFO for more important policy statements. As a part of the monitoring of federal progress and performance of the grant, the award is subject to reporting requirements. Quarterly and financial submissions will be required. The quarterly progress report will include the submission of the federal financial report, also known as the SF-425. Quarterly performance reports and other and other documents will be required throughout the period of performance. Please review section F of the NOFO a little further, which includes more guidance on award administration and reporting requirements, including the examples of the metrics, milestones, goals, and other information that will be required for reporting during the performance period. As mentioned before, Cynthia Nielsen is the federal awarding agency point of contact for questions related to the NOFO. So please send all questions to the awd-grants at faa.gov mailbox. Multiple applications from the same entity are not allowed for individual programs. However, entities may apply for both NOFOs if otherwise eligible. You must submit an application by the stated due date of August 16th. Late applications will not be accepted. If duplicate applications are submitted, the FAA will select the at last application submitted. As a reminder, FAA will not award a grant to an applicant who has duplicate applications. Again, we will only accept the last application. Finally, on the behalf of FAA and the Office of NextGen, we want to thank you for your interest in these opportunities. As a final note, I just want to state that this is an overview and it's not all inclusive to either NOFO. It is the responsibility of the applicant to read the NOFO in its entirely and its in entirety and carefully follow the guidelines and instructions. You can also visit the FAA AWD website listed on this slide to subscribe for more information about each program. Q&As are also posted on the website. And again, if you have any questions during this process, please ensure that you email that AWD mailbox. All right, so we're gonna take we're going to take some questions. I see you guys have a lot of questions in the chat. Let me. Yes, just let me know when you want to start. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, so the first one's kind of lengthy. So um, I'm going to read it. So if you need me to read it again, I'll do that. Just let me know. Here it goes. Okay. okay. The narrative template states to include a work plan. If one inserts the work plan template, it is extremely difficult to stay within the 10 page narrative limit. The guideline states that six pages of charts is, is not included in the 10 page limit. Should we count the work page tables as charts and exclude those pages from the narrative page limit? Or, should we attach the work plan as separate as a separate document and attachments and refer to the excuse me refer to the attachment in the narrative okay so again you want to keep in mind that the project narrative is only 
10 pages. If you have charts that you would like to include, you can include them in the uh, uh, attachment form and just make sure you label that document correctly so we know um, it accompanies that budget narrative. But you really want to limit the amount that you're submitting. So keep in mind, there is a page limit and then grants.gov also has a package limit. Okay, that's one question on to the next. Okay, this, I think this question came in about three times maybe four so and then to make sure you um click answer live so then it, it will decrease um for you in the chat box okay we'll do okay so i'll start and you want me to click answer live now or want me to if once i please? answer it you can click answer live perfect gotcha can you please clarify the 12 month budget but 24 month project absolutely so this grant this grant program will be up to 24 months. So what that means is there is an opportunity to have a two year um, project performance. So what that means is your budget narrative will speak to the two year program. So you're gonna outline what you believe you can achieve within those two years. However, the government has the right to exercise that continuation award, meaning you're gonna submit your budget for 12 months. However, your project narrative is gonna outline two years. So what's gonna happen is if you are into the project and you're, um, we're eight months into the program and myself and um, other AWD team members see that you are killing it, we are going to reach out to you to have you exercise your second option year. And we're going to request a budget for that second year for you to continue your award. So you're going to get approved for $500,000 for this first budget year. And then once that budget year ends, you have an opportunity to get an additional $500,000 to continue your work. So I hope that makes it clear. So you have up to two years, but it definitely is based on funding and it is based on your performance. So if you're not performing after that 12 months, the FAA has the right to say, hey, we're not going to continue you for that second year. That's why the project period is 24 months, but we're only requesting that you submit a 12 month budget because we need to see the work that you're going to do within that 12 months in order to continue your effort for that second year and get a second pot of money. Okay, on to the next. Similar, but it's because the person says they think they got something confused. So this is the question. Okay. I think I got confused with the explanation of slide six. Per the NOFO section B, it says that, in quotes, a funded project may have a period of performance of up to two years, you just explained that, with a maximum of 500K per year. I interpret this as saying that the project plan submitted in the application can span two years, and I can to draw down from this award during both years. Is that correct? No, that's that's not correct. So you're only going to have access to $500,000 in a 12 month period. And if you perform, we you will have the option to exercise that second year with additional funding. But for that first 12 months, you will only have access to what the government approved you for. So if you got approved for $500,000, you will utilize that $500,000 for that first 12 months. Okay, on to the next. The question is, did I understand correctly that the budget narrative should just be for year one and not for year one and two, but the project narrative should be for both years. 
That is correct. And let me explain the rationale behind that. So your project wants to, you're, you want to ensure that your project speaks to longevity, not only longevity, but for those two years, because if you are selected for that second option year, the only documentation we are going to request from you is a new application, which would be that SF424, and then a project uh, budget a budget document, which is that SF-424A. Those are on the only two documents we will be requesting from you if you are selected to continue on your project for that second year. You would not have to go through this application process all over again, and you would be submitting that documentation to FAA not through grants.gov. So if we already have your project narrative on file, we already know what you plan to do for those two years. The only thing that you would be getting approved for would be the um would be additional funding for that second year. Okay. All right. The next question. Part 147 schools are not eligible for AMT program. And that was a question. Part I'm 147 not, schools are not eligible for AMT programs. Correct. If you did not see it on the eligible projects, then you are not an eligible applicant. But I will please prompt you to look at Section C of that um, of that NOFO. I'm not sure if you're applying for pilot or uh aviation maintenance, but it's section C in both NOFOs. Okay. Um, that, uh, one, one second. Go ahead. Yeah, let me, let me add to that. Okay. So um, to bring clarification around, if you are a part 147, um, FA part 147 certificate holder, no, you will not be eligible to apply under that particular status. However, if you are a 147 school and you are accredited by a recognized uh, agency from the Department of Education, so you are an education entity, then you could apply as an educational entity, not under your 147 uh, certificate uh, status. So I wanna just be clear, if you are a 147 holder, you can, in fact, apply if you are teaching and you're educating and you have a school, you can apply under your educational status. Uh, and again, you have to be an accredited uh, school teaching aviation maintenance technician, and you could apply as an, a, a higher institution, a higher education institution. Thank you, Miranda. All right, Cynthia. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'll continue on. Here we go. Am I required to have a partner if I plan to start my own apprentice program at a 145 station, a parts 145 station? Oh, no, partnerships are totally up to the applicant. So you are not required to have a partner. However, if you choose to have a partner, there are um, requirements you need for your application, but it is not, partnership is not a requirement. Okay. Um, next question. Oh, <laughs> this is cute. Honorable ma'am, <laughs> how can I apply to this program from, oh, Bangladesh? Um, as long as you apply electronically, you can apply from, from anywhere, uh, but it also depends on the project you are applying under. So make sure your project is eligible. Okay. And another one similar. Can I apply for the scholarship if I am Mexican? Can you apply for, it sounds like you're an individual. So if you're an right. individual, you're not eligible to apply for this NOFO. However, you can seek opportunities. If you go to the FAA website, there mm -hmm. are uh, current grantees that are outlined that mm -hmm. offer scholarships. So you'll want to contact um, that particular entity in your area to see if they have eligible scholarships at this time. Okay. And this says, all right. Okay, this is back to me. Oh, hi, Cynthia, thank you for your response, but I am unclear with what it means. Does this mean it does not matter as long as the applicant meets the eligibility 
criteria. Is that a question you already answered? Or I think so. And I'm sorry. It looks like someone named Tori Foster. I, I can't recall what I was responding to. So please forgive me if I don't have a, I can't remember what the question was, if it was unclear. Okay. But so yes, you, also, um, also, if you have questions and you feel like we did not answer them here mm -hmm. within the webinar, again, please make sure you um, email us at that awd-grants Mm -hmm. at faa.gov and that will be Cynthia and myself answering mm -hmm. those questions for you so mm -hmm. if something is unclear today we mm -hmm. can answer make sure we um give you a satisfactory answer within that mailbox okay I'm gonna go to the next one and I'm looking at the timing on this these this came in at 2 19 we're at through almost three o'clock so let me go to the next question okay can you clarify if educational nonprofit organizations 501c3s providing aviation education are eligible to apply. All right, uh, Miranda, I'm going to kick that over to mm -hmm. you because I know that's something we discussed this morning. Thanks. There's a few in the mailbox too. So <laughs> yeah. So um, this this has been a question that um, mm -hmm. we have actually been working with our legal department. Um, to to try to actually allow the the definition that's in the legislation, which says that you have to be a labor organization, we were trying to get an interpretation um, to kind of allow it to be a little bit interpreted a little bit broadly. So at this time, I don't have an answer for you, but I can guarantee you we will have an answer um, within the next couple of days. But what I can say right now. If you are considered a labor organization, and, and I would say, according to IRS uh, 501C4, uh, C6, if you are either one of those, those two categories are considered eligible. Um, the, the ones that are in question right now is the 5013C and the 501 three, five, or C5, sorry about that. So if in fact you are one of those two, um, we are working on getting you an answer of whether you can be considered eligible or if it's gonna be interpreted a little wider than just a labor organization. So stay tuned and, and we'll have an answer for you either on our website uh, or in our Q and A's uh, posted to our website. Okay. And okay, uh, Cynthia, thanks, if you see if you see duplicate mm -hmm. questions, can you just yes. hit answer live? Because I can see the number that's accumulating. So just hit yes. that answer live if you see duplicates and so we can get those out of the way. OK, um, uh, next question. Um, what is the uh, cap on equipment? Would a flight simulator used for training college students in an aviation program be considered non allowed, not a lot, non allowed heavy equipment? So the thing you want to keep in mind about equipment is that we're not going to fund you to purchase a plane or a simulator that's equivalent to the cost of a plane. So you want to make sure that that simulator is reasonable and just. Um, and that's something that you can ask, not only you put in your proposal, but if approved, you want to make sure you um, ask me that early once you get approved. So that equipment, you can purchase that equipment as soon as your award gets approved. Okay, here we go to the next question. This has to do with the cover letter. Um, what goes into the cover letter? Does the chart go into the 10 pages of narrative or, or in the appendix? So if your chart speaks to your project narrative, you want to ensure that it is included within the project narrative. Again, there is a 10 page limit and there is a package limit. So you want to be very detailed and very specific. Don't just overload the package thinking you're just going to throw as much information into it. We want specific information. Um, your cover letter is just going to outline your um, name and it's going to need to be signed by, by the AOR. So it's very, very straightforward, very generic. It does not need to include a lot of information. Your project narrative is where your meat and potatoes are going to go. Okay. Um, 
I'm so sorry. Jess, can I add to that? Yes. Um, so because I, I'm hearing um, a common thread around um, additional attachments and charts and diagrams. And so I know that um, that is where we also want to make sure that anything that you're attaching, um, whether it be a chart, a diagram, ensure that it, it's it's information that's going to provide us with additional information about why you should be given the grant. Um, in the past, we've actually had um, a number of, of attachments that have been attached to applications, and it, in many cases, did not add value to your package. So I just want to caution you and, and just ensure that whatever you attach, let it be intentional and let it be something that can tell the evaluators that's looking at your application, you know, how it is that you're going to be able to carry out your grant. And, and I think that's going to be a, a benefit or added um, support for you in your packet. So again, keep it to a minimal, your additional uh, uploads or your additional charts, but make sure it's meaningful. Thank you, Miranda. You're on mute, Cynthia. I clicked the wrong button. Sorry about that. Thanks. Okay. I am the president of an experimental aircraft association group. We would like to give scholarships to students to pursue their aviation goals, but it doesn't sound like we would qualify. That's correct. So the pilot program does not give uh, scholarships. That is only for the aviation maintenance program. Okay. Okay. On to the next. If we are looking to establish a new apprenticeship program and have identified the partner, but we don't have an agreement yet, the potential part, I think I responded to this, the potential partner shouldn't be listed as a partner since we won't get an agreement prior to the grant submission. No, I didn't answer that one. So it sounds like at some point you plan on having a partner, but if mm -hmm. this is not approved at the time your application is submitted, then it doesn't sound like you're going to be eligible. Your partnership would need to be established prior to um, the approval of the award. So at the time you submit the application, you will, you will need to have an agreement in place for that partnership. You cannot bring a partner in in the middle of your period of performance. And keep in mind, you stated that the letter of commitment is a part of your package. Correct. So if you don't have a letter of commitment from your partner, then we don't acknowledge that person or that entity as participating in your grant. So. Okay. All right. Thanks. On to the next. Okay. Are agencies allowed to apply for the funds and then sit up at a RFP process with the funds to find vendors for the services provided? Or is the recommendation that we have our team already put together? Um, it's understandable that you may not have every single um, person that is going to work on the grant hired at this time. However, you have to have um, if it's key personnel, you have to have position listed in your proposal. Um, if you're talking about contractors, it is best to know who you plan to contract with, only because if the contract exceeds $25,000, you want to make sure that contract is attached to your application. So it, it really is best to know who you plan to not only partnership, but contract out. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let's see. Can you still qualify for this program if you have pilot license from a different country? So again, you want to make sure you're reading those eligible applicants and eligible projects. If you do not fall within that, those parameters, you are not going to be deemed eligible. So I'll add to that. So I did answer a question in the chat regarding to that. So the 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 key is that you have to be FAA certified. Okay. So if you. you are being certified from another country, um, then no, you would not be eligible. So mm -hmm. it must you must come with an 
FAA uh, part 147, 141 uh, certificate in order to be eligible. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank All you right, for Cynthia. that clarification. Okay. Um, any length reduction for supplement? Okay. Hmm. Any length restrictions on the supplemental information? So we will not be clicking on links. So whatever information you want to add, you have to make sure it is in PDF form and it is attached to your application. Okay, here it is. Okay, so it's a startup program. So those are similar. You've already answered similar ones regarding the years. The next one, will these be additional? Plenty of it. Okay, question kind of future. Will there be additional grant funding opportunities? We are in the planning phase of starting a new program. I'm not sure if we would meet the August, he has eight, someone has 18th deadline. I thought it was the 16th. It's, um, mm -hmm. It is August 16th. Mm -hmm. um, and depending on funding, we hope that this program will run, mm -hmm. um, but it is contingent upon funding that we, you know, and approval that we get from Congress. Okay, thank you. Next question. We are starting up a new program. Is it acceptable to have startup activities during year one and then add student uh, recruitment slash scholarships during the second year, which would be reflected in the year two budget if funded for the second year? So you don't want to depend heavily on that second year because again, it is contingent upon your performance. So if you are approved, then you will be selected for that second option year. Um, however, if you are applying for the pilot program, that program allows you know, startup curriculum. So again, you wanna make sure you're reading that eligibility section very heavily. Okay. And I'll, I'll add to that. Um, so just keep in mind that this, this grant uh, program is very competitive. So, you know, one of the, the things that you're going to be evaluated that Jazz mentioned was on impact. So you want to make sure that if in order to stay competitive and, and to have an advantage over another uh, applicant, you want to make sure that you are showing how much of an impact that you can reach uh, a large number number of individuals, and of course, uh, outcomes. So just a little piece of advice. Um, sure, startup, we, we can take that and we'll, we'll assess that. But if it comes down to looking at someone who's actually going to literally hit the floor running, it may become mm -hmm. a thing where, you know, you may be looked at, or the person that's going to hit the floor running may be looked at a little bit higher than the person that is doing a startup. Does it make the startup you know, a bad thing. It's just simply, it just depends on how you're being evaluated and, and who's evaluating you at that time. So. Okay, thank you. All right. There's still questions coming in about the page limit. I'll read one more and the rest I'll just push off to the side. But regarding page limitations, can the narrative be 16 pages total? including 10 pages of narrative, as well as up to six pages of tables and charts, or must the up to six pages of tables and charts include within the 10 page narrative? It's the I, think, um, I think Miranda and I have answered this yeah. very heavily. So again, you want to keep in mind that the project narrative has a 10 page limit. There are no ifs, ands, or buts. You will be deemed ineligible if your project narrative is longer than 10 pages. And that includes if you add attachment saying project narrative to the attachment form. So you want to ensure those charts and, and the they speak to your project and the goals. If it does not have anything to do with the project and the goals and how you plan to execute those project and goals, do not include them because you will be deemed ineligible. Yeah, and, I, and I'm gonna say it again. The more that you can be concise about what your plan is, the better your application will be probably understood by somebody that's reading it. So you know, try to make it very concise as you possibly can um, in the process. 
And, and I know if, if some of you have applied in the past, I know the page limit was 25 and the lessons learned was our technical evaluation team said the application was too lengthy and it was uh, a little too excruciating for them to go through that many pages. So we limited the page limit to assist in our review process. And our last, um, our last NOFO, it was successful because because we are trying to avoid a lot of fluff information that we receive. So again, keep it very specific. And there is that 10 page limit. You can meet it. Trust, trust me, you can meet it. Just be, make sure it, it speaks to your goals and objectives. If it does not speak to your goals and objectives, we do not need it. Okay. All right. On to the next question. If a company has four separate operating units with each one registered with the respective local FAA FISDO as a repair station, <laughs> excuse me, employing aircraft maintenance techni technicians, can we operate units applying for a grant? Say that last. Can we the each, last okay. Mm -hmm. Can we each operating unit apply for a grant? So he's asking. Oh, if yeah. Uh, yes, you, you can. Um, mm -hmm. Just keep in mind, because we've seen it before where there are same entities, just different um, mm -hmm. locations um, and each had their own EIN number. Mm -hmm. um, because of the limited amount, especially if it's if you're under maintenance, we are only awarding 18 uh, awardees. So you may have a chance one of your entities may have a chance of getting selected, but you all can apply, especially if you all have, uh, each entity has its own EIN number. Okay. All right. Here's another question. Is a letter of support required on behalf of all internal employees? The differentiation between letters of commitment and letters of support is a little confusing beyond that letters of commitment are required for partners and contractors. So you wouldn't need one for each employee. You're gonna, again, it, you're gonna use the E-Verify to verify your employees, but we don't need a letter of support for each employee of who's gonna be operate, helping assist in operating the grant. Your okay. letter of commitment and your agreement is based upon your partnerships. So if you're operating as an individual entity and you don't have a partnership, that documentation is not required. So again, you want to go to, I think it's appendix one of the NOFO and look at all the required documents become some of them say if applicable. So if it doesn't speak to your project and how you're going to apply, you do not need that letter. Okay. All right. If, okay. On to the next one. Um, if you have a certificate for part 107 and working on part 147, would our university qualify to apply? Go ahead, Miranda. Yeah, so if I understand it, so they're mm -hmm. they're working on uh, part 107, which is the well, drone they, certification. Um, just a little clarification. Okay. They said they... If we have a certificate, they already have a certificate for part 107. Okay. And they are working on the part 147. Okay. So they would like to know because they're working on the 147, would their university be able to qualify to apply? Okay. So it depends on what program you're applying for. <laughs> if you are applying for it under pilot and you have the 107, which is the drone certification, and you're a college university, absolutely, you would be eligible. If you are applying for the aviation maintenance and you are a uh, part or you're working on your 147, you still could apply under the, the uh, aviation maintenance under as a higher education. Remember, I, I mentioned that earlier. If you are an accredited um, school, aviation maintenance school, and you're accredited, or even if you're not, because in this case, it sounds like you're working on it, but the fact that you're a college or a university, you still would be eligible to apply to both programs, whether it be the aircraft or the aviation maintenance. Okay. 
Thank you. A little bit, um, another question kind of similar uh, along the line of what you're dealing with right now. I'm confused who is the target audience for the aircraft maintenance grant. The FAQ states the audience is K through 12 and beyond, which would include community college students. The grants criteria number three states the audience is high school students and teachers. Please clarify if community college students qualifies for the aircraft maintenance grant. Okay, so I can take this. So I'm not sure um, what section uh, that's coming from, but the air, air aviation maintenance grant, it is for any student any from K to 12, adults, veterans, it could be anyone that could apply or that you can target. It is only the aircraft pilot grant program that you're required and you're restricted to educate high school students only. So if there's an error in the NOFO, then we'll certainly take a look at that. And, and I try think to she make said the, right um, the FAQ, so that may have been... Um, oh. A typo. I thought that Brian and I removed that, so okay. it may have been a typo. But that, um, as far as uh, the eligibility and age requirement, that is outlined in the NOFO correctly. Oh, okay. 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 All right. On to. Okay. Here's one on page six of the NOFO. It says on page six, the NOFO states, ensure that each header and or subheader are clearly labeled so that sections can be easily separated. Is it sufficient to label with the heading for criterion one, two, three, and four, or should each bullet below each criterion in the sample outline on page 25 be another heading? So it sounds like you're asking about the project narrative and each criterion. We have a sample in the NOFO. So please utilize that sample because that sample is exactly how we want to see the submission. And then again, I discussed the uh, requirements for the submission, making sure it's double space, um, has the cover letter and things of that nature. So that is thoroughly outlined. So if you don't see that on page six, please go to the appendix section where there is a sample for that project narrative. Okay. All right. Here another. We move on. Are agencies allowed to apply for the funds and then sit up an RFP? I process? think we answered, we answered that question already. We did? Okay, it must we be coming did. back through. I think they came back through again. Okay, so let me push this off and push this one off because it looks like it came back through again. I, I, think, I, I think we need a little clarification with that question. Um, they mentioned agency. I want to make sure we're not referring to another, like a federal agency. And that we're acting, maybe they're emphasizing an entity. So maybe whoever's asking that question, if we could, could get some clarification around if you really mean can an agency apply? Because in our in our minds, we're we're hearing the word agency and we're thinking federal government. Right. Another okay, agency. so it, it's okay. So in his question, is the recommendation to already have all vendors aligned before? sitting up or can we outline our RFP? So it's like a, a, our agencies, okay, I have to go back up. Okay, our agents, okay, he has back-to-back -back questions. Are, are agencies allowed to apply for the funds and then sit up? So you want a clarification on is he's talking about an organization versus an agency or is he talking individuals, which individuals can apply? Yes, please, if we can yes. get clarification so, around that. Okay, I think so this right is, now, I'm seeing it uh, one from the, the at the bottom um, that they're talking about a regional transportation uh, agency. Oh, and it's always an actual agency. Got it. So it, again, that would depend on their status. What exactly would be their their status? Are they a certificate holder? 
Uh, are they a educational institution? So it depends on what their eligibility status is. Yeah. All right, so on to the next question. Is it allowable for to request funds to cover the cost of participant certification exams? So, so there are there are funding restrictions and and unfortunately that is one of them. So go to the um, funding restrictions page of the NOFO and it thoroughly outlines what is acceptable and what would be uh, restricted. Okay, here's the next question again. Um, in previous years, we submitted the letter of commitment from our partners. Mm -hmm. Can you help with what it, what items you expect to be added in the signed letter of commitment and agreement? So it sounds like you're saying, were you deemed ineligible for that particular letter? Because I, we would have to see what your letter stated. Um, as far as the, the letter of commitment and the agreements, if you have a partnership, we want to see who you're partnering with. What does that agreement look like? What does the partnership outline what the partnership is going to do? How is the partnership going to speak to the project goals and objectives? Um, and how the partner is going to show up? Because again, if you're partnering with someone, you also have to hold them accountable because we will be holding you accountable. So you want to make sure that agreement is thoroughly outlined. What is the pro, what is the partnership going to achieve um, during that period of performance? Okay. Let's go to the next question. Okay, how would a nonprofit verify their eligibility? So you you certainly uh, want to check your IRS. Um, so if you go onto the IRS website, there's a lookup feature where if you type in your name of your your nonprofit you should be able to find um, your particular name on the IRS website and that will determine uh, or should be able to provide with you what your status is. Um, if that is not an option, I would just say visit your IRS, your local IRS office and um, they should be able to provide some information for you on that. Okay, and next question let me pull that one up okay in the previous slide it did not mention a part 147 school being an eligible applicant but had higher education programs being eligible should my school apply under the part 147 or community college accreditation if you have um, an accreditation for a higher education and you can support that and you can upload your certification or accreditation and you can attach it to your application, then it would be recommended that that's what you would apply for. So whatever you are able to show proof of eligibility for that entity. Okay. All right. On to the next question. If we have a correlation of a coalition of a local airport, a local area ISD, an R1 institution, is there a recommendation on who should be the applicant based on the three edges? Oh, uh, based on the three partnerships. Yes. So that would be based on that would be for you to determine. However, you want to ensure that whichever is selected, that entity is going to be a strong candidate, not only speaking towards eligibility, but also meets the uh, project eligibility for either program. So it'd be really up to you. But again, we would just recommend that whoever is the strongest entity of the three, and then you would write your proposal outlining how the other two will support that project. And also making sure that that entity has the uh, the UEI number mm -hmm. and that they have not been um, debarred, debarred or suspended. Or, yeah, suspended, exactly. Okay. All right, here we go on the next one. If I have questions on how, on how to fill out the budget information, is there help available? 
Yes. So grants.gov actually has um, links and webinars. So if you go to grants.gov, they actually have like videos on YouTube that show you how to fill out a lot of these documents. I've actually done it myself. Um, but yeah, you can definitely go through grants.gov and YouTube is a also, also a useful tool to show you how to complete these documents. Okay. All right. Oh, what is the cost policy statement? Not so in your, the phone. I thought we removed that this year. Did we not, Marie? We, we did. It was removed. I responded to a question. Oh, you already? Okay. Yeah. So, so that, yeah, the cost policy statement was uh, something that was in last year's NOFO. It has since removed. So that requirement no longer exists. Okay. So on to the next. Um, is an airport authority that is considered a local government agency eligible to apply for an application? As long as you have proof of eligibility and can support that entity. Right. And, and also keep in mind, some of the airports are privately owned. Some of them are owned mm -hmm. by a municipality. Some of them are owned by the county, the city. So if in fact it is owned by a county, a state, or a local government, you can in fact apply under their particular state and local government. If it is uh, privately owned, then that, that would probably uh, exclude you from being eligible. So just be mindful if you are working with an airport, just make sure that they have or, or understanding their status to apply. Okay, thank you. All right, here we go to the next one. Can the funds cover a sprinkler system in a hangar so that high school school dual credit students can take classes? Our AMT program is in an existing hangar that does not have the required, and in, in parentheses, by policy, sprinkler mm -hmm. system to host high school students. Would this be an allowable expense? <clears throat> that would be, that's a new one, Miranda. I, I mean, yeah, well, the, I think it's it's fairly um, simple. So keep in mind, we are, we are educating high school students and we're building a curriculum. So building a curriculum doesn't necessarily uh, require a new sprinkler, a sprinkler system. So I would, I, and we're talking about the aircraft pilot uh, grant, right? They didn't distinguish which one. Yeah, they didn't okay. say which so, one. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so in either one, it, it, mm -hmm. is, it applies the same. So okay. keep in mind, when we're educating high school students, your curriculum, which is what you're being asked to do, is mm -hmm. to develop air and to deliver a curriculum. Those expenses of purchasing a sprinkler system would not be a direct Mm -hmm. expense to developing a curriculum um, and educating L uh, high school students. And the same goes for the uh, aircraft maintenance. Again, it's about educating, recruiting, and developing the field. So those types of expenses would not be a direct expense um, to, to doing so. So okay. I, would, I would probably discourage you from uh, including expenses like that uh, on your requests. Okay. All right. Thank you. On to next. Can you please clarify this statement in the NOFO? Quote, grant funds may not be used for flight hours. Can we, okay. And no, we, we, I think we're clear on that as something we've talked about. Um, so um, there's another part to this. Uh, to oh, the, go ahead. I'm sorry. My apologies. No worries. No worries. Can we fund students with scholarships for flight training hours and an accredited flight school? You want me to start it over again? No, no, no I, I got it. So okay. if, again, the pilot program does not provide scholarships. So if you are applying um, as a maintenance grantee, those are that program is eligible for scholarships as far as flight hours for this particular nofo flight hours is a restricted um request 
Okay, on to the next. Okay, should a budget narrative slash justification accompany any year two SF 424A? No, so for this um, cycle, you're only gonna, your project narrative is gonna speak to a two year span. Your budget is only gonna speak to the first year. And then once you are contacted to say you're eligible for that second option year, we will reach out to you so you can send us a proposed budget for that second year. So your for, for this particular application, you're going to ensure that your SF-424A only speaks to 20, uh, 12 months. So just 12 months on that 424A. Okay. All right. Thank you. On to the next one. Okay. Are carryover balances allowable if unobligated funds remain in year one? assuming funding for year two is awarded. That is correct. Okay. Oh, okay. We did that one. That's done. That's done. Okay. I don't know why this came back let, up. Let me, me, let me add to that. Sure. They're wanting you, we're encouraging you to spend all of your money as soon as you can, because the more uh -huh. carryover we have, the more we have to explain why that money has been spent. And what we what you don't want is for the money to expire. So yeah. just, just be really mindful that, yes, we will work with you to make sure that funds can be carried over, but it's that time that it can be used once it's carried over, over is going to be minimal because we don't want the funds to expire and it actually goes back out of our agency and we we won't have the capability of using that that so. is correct so so to answer your question there it is it is possible but there will be a time limit on for that carryover for those carryover funds okay All right on to the next can a single cfi apply as a part 61 educator can a single CFI apply as a Part 61 educator? I can take that, Jess. So if you are a CFI, Certified Flight Instructor, and you have a business, and mm -hmm. your business, your entity, which, which would be you, you can, in fact, apply and be eligible because you are a Part 61 uh, eligible candidate. We just ask that you attach your CFI certificate that, that mm -hmm. says that you are a uh, flight instructor and that you have an entity, a business entity uh, that's teaching under that entity or under that structure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Miranda. Thank you very much. Here we go. If, oops, oops, oops. If you are an accredited high school, can you partner with a non-accredited partner with a 147? Uh, repeat the question for me one more time. If you are an accredited high school, can you partner with a non-accredited partner oh, with a yes. 147? Yes, you can. Again, okay. just make sure your partnership is thoroughly outlined and how that partner is going to help you contribute to your goals and objectives. Okay. According to the NOFO, field trips should be kept to a minimum. However, a fly-in recruitment event targeted to high schools allowable. A flight event targeted to high schools? Yes, a, a fly-in recruitment event targeted to high school allowable. Uh, yes, that would be an allowable field trip. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, I know you all spoke about the 501. 501C, 3, 4, 5, yes. 6. <laughs> yes. They so get it. that answered live. Yes. And I have it coming up live. Please confirm, can a 501c3 
with the youth aviation mission apply for these grants but i think you guys are we are we already yeah you can i pushed it over gotcha thank you Mm -hmm. okay can you clarify the eligibility related to a school in our case the school district would need to be the applicant does that work uh yes we have school districts apply um, so as long as you can, the school district can provide accreditation and it's attached to the application. Okay. And let's see, are the SF3881 form, the ACH, oh, the ACH vendor, pay- mm-hmm. vendor, um, sorry, vendor payment form and a cost policy statement are required forms? That's the cost question. policy statement is no longer a required form. However, that SF3881 is still a required document. Okay. All right. Here's the next one. Is the, mm, that's that's what you, okay. Is the 10 page limit of narrative single spaced or double? Double spaced. Okay. And mm, uh, let's see. Do you, okay, do you, okay, I don't know, I hope I'm reading this correctly, it looks like it's kind of disjointed. Do you have to, okay, I think this is what they're saying, I apologize if it's not. Mm -hmm. Do you have to apply all at once, or can we save and come back to our application? Oh, okay, so in grants.gov, you can save your your application so you can apply because it's active now so Mm -hmm. if you're still trying to get your documents together yes you have um grants.gov has something called workspace Mm -hmm. so you can save and continue your application however make sure your application is complete by august 16th okay all right here's the next one All right. Um, Since it is summer and many schools have not yet started, but have indicated an interest in the program in the past, are we able to include them even if they are unable to sign an MOU prior to the August 16th submission date? Um, Can you read the question one? Can you read it one more time? Sure. Since it is summer and many Mm -hmm. schools have not yet started, but have indicated an interest in this program in the past, are we able to include them even if they are unable to sign an MOU prior to August 16th submission date? Oh, gotcha. Okay. So again, when you are submitting your application, if you plan on partnering with a school, you definitely want to make sure that MOU is attached to your application. It must be attached because we have to know who you are partnering with and how each partner is going to contribute to the goals and objectives of the grant. Okay. All right. Does the president of a nonprofit qualify as, wait a minute, qualify as able to apply for these no codes? Not as an individual. Not as not as an individual, no. Okay. All right. Can you clarify whether okay? Can you clarify? Okay, here it is. Can you clarify whether partners? In parentheses, nonprofit, pro- programmatic, non-contractual, not contractual. Can you wait a minute? Let me allow me to start over again because they have quite a bit here. Can you clarify whether partners must provide both a letter of support and a letter of agreement? Would the letter of agreement be one letter for all partners or a single letter for agreement for each partner? You would include a letter per partner. Okay, here we go. Are letters of support from outside the organization relevant for the application? 
i.e. government agency, private sector entity, et cetera? Yes. Okay. Uh, let's see where we are. Okay, here we go. Would, <clears throat> would an economic development authority be eligible? We are a university wanting to work alongside with the economic development authority to apply for the grant. Which one of us should apply or would we apply solely and list the support of the economic development authority? So again, it depends on which entity is stronger. You want to make sure because there are a limited amount of awards being approved, you wanna ensure whatever, which entity is stronger that is going to be your lead entity and the other will follow as a partner. Okay. Well, oh, this is an interesting one. In previous awards, it seems that programs are localized within a city or contiguous service area. Can a program run across three different states? Oh, can a program run across three different states? Mm -hmm. Yes, it can. As long as you have your lead entity and you're stating where each location will be within your application. Okay. Okay. Uh, do we? I think you already answered that. You told them they can sign. Hold just a second. Mm -hmm. Sure, of a regional program be eligible. Would a would the creation of regional mentorship programs be an eligible project? So again, it sounds like per my recommendation, it sounds, but you still have to read the eligible mm -hmm. projects to ensure your project speaks to that eligibility, whichever you are applying under. Okay. I think in a short answer, um, if it's, repeat that, Cynthia, the name of that program. The, oops, oops. I just, Did they, I don't know if they said a name. Yeah, it called it the, well, they titled it like it was a name. Mm -hmm. Okay. I pushed it off. It was the regional authority. Hold on. Somehow it jumped out of sync of my, hmm. Okay. So yeah, yeah it, it's not in the yeah. location. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. So it again, like Jasmine said, you know, if it's not, if it's for the aircraft pilot and it's not directly educating high school students, mm -hmm. then it, or I'm sorry, we, we can't leave out educating teachers. So mm -hmm. teaching the teachers. So I want to leave that out. Um, mm -hmm. In addition to actually uh, not only teaching high school students about those that are pursuing to be a pilot, but also keeping in mind those that want to have an uh, aerospace engineer career or a drone, unmanned drone uh, operator uh, option. So anything in those types of uh, aviation related fields, if it's not educating high school students to do one of those aviation type careers, then it would not be eligible. Okay. Um, all right. So this is a along the lines with the same group, but a still the economic development authority. So this is okay. a, um, could we as an HBCU work with the county airport economic development authority and the city municipality and mm -hmm. still be eligible? Or should we apply a loan to be a stronger candidate and just obtain letters of support from those entities? Let me start over again. No, no, no. I understood. I understood the question. I saw Miranda, but I was I was just gonna say it sounds either either way. I mean, you can apply either way. Okay. Yeah, either way, you're eligible. If you're right. an HBCU standing alone or if you are partnering with the municipality of the airport. But what I'm hearing them really ask is, okay, is it better? And that's not a question that we can actually answer right. because yes. we don't we don't know all of the particulars mm -hmm. around, you know, the partnership and who, how they would partner with you. We don't know if that looks good. We don't know if it's bad. So really, that's a decision that you would have to make. Um, but again, we we're just going to encourage you to 
to partner. That's that's certainly um, an encouragement that we'll give to you. Um, and just, again, make the best decision. At the end of the day, you want to make sure that you make a big impact. So if those partnerships can help you make that impact bigger, you know, then then that's a that's a consideration on your part. But um, it's really a decision you have to make on that. Yeah, that's just to say, just either way, you the way you wrote the question, either way, you sound eligible. OK, here we go. Here's the next one. Oops. My screen is jumping. So just a second. I don't know if more questions are coming in, but it's still jump. Okay. How can we okay? How can we train pilots without funding flight hours? Can tuition for flight schools be built into a sub award to a flight school? Want me to read it again? <laughs> no, I, I I got it. I'm, okay. I'm just, Miranda okay. understand. Yeah. Yeah. So keep in mind, keep in mind, we are not training pilots. We mm -hmm. are educating. The, the, the goal of this program is to develop a curriculum and deliver that curriculum to high school students. So we know that high school students are not going to get their flying uh, license other than if they get a certificate, I'm sorry, a student license um, before 16 or at 16 or if they get a solo pilot license, but to pay for flight hours, that's mm -hmm. not a part of this program. Okay. Um, so it, I, I understand your question. And ultimately mm -hmm. that, that is something that, um, you know, I think Congress is looking at and they're trying to find a way to uh, 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 alleviate some of the barrier of the cost for these flight hours. But unfortunately mm -hmm. the way the policy and the legislation is written today, it's not scheduled or it's not designed to pay for flight hours for students. Okay, thank you. Okay, next question. If funded under the Maintenance Technical Workers AWD grant and successful in awarded year two, is there another program that would allow for maturity of a, an apprenticeship program funded under this funding opportunity. Is there another program? To... Yes. So, so let you... Mm -hmm. No, I'm sorry. Can you read just the second half of that question? Sure. Is there another program that would allow for maturity of an apprenticeship program funded under this funding opportunities? So the aviation maintenance does mm -hmm. provide apprenticeships and scholarships mm -hmm. if I'm if I'm hearing your question correctly. So yes. Yes. Yeah, so the first there's part, not another program outside of that. Okay, yeah, so I think it's the first part of that that's mm -hmm. key, the first part of that question. Uh, mm -hmm. Cynthia, can you repeat that first part? Sure. Is funded under the maintenance technical workers AWD grant and successful in awarded year two. Oh, I missed that part. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there another program that would allow for maturity of an apprenticeship program funded under this funding opportunity? So he's it's making about, a scenario. He does the first one. Mm -hmm. And let's say he's successful on the second one mm -hmm. for the second year. He wants to know if this could be a carry on of the maturity of that, the first part that he accomplished. Oh, I, I understand what you're saying. Okay. Mm -hmm. So again, if your project narrative, again, that's why you want to ensure that your project narrative is speaking to the two years so that we can see what you mean by the maturity of the program. But again, that outline is going to be a two-year outline. And so if you are successful in your program, then yes, you will be elected to have the option of that second year. And if your program has uh, sustainability and you show us that it can go beyond, that, that is, that is exactly what we want to see. So yes, to answer your question, if I'm hearing that correctly. Yeah, that's that's the way I heard it too, Jazz. It, okay. it sounds like maybe the person may have currently have a a grant at this at this point, and that they want to apply for this 
round um, and pretty much advance it. Um, right, to that's another yeah. level. Yeah, and if that's if that's what they're proposing, absolutely. That's what I say. That's exactly what we want to see. Absolutely. Okay. All, All right. We're getting, we're almost done. Yep. Down to 10. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. 11 rather. Um, let's see here. Oh, somebody just put another question in. I'm not sure, but here we go. Uh, oops. I lost my space. Okay. Here it is. Since we, hmm, since it is summer. Okay. She brought it in again. It's, it's basically the same type of question regarding the memorandum of understanding in place prior to I, the- Yeah, I got you. So again, you have, you do have to have that MOU in place mm -hmm. when you apply. Okay. So if you're not going to have that partnership or you, you don't know who you're going to partner with, you either need to stand alone and submit your application or you have to get that agreement prior to your application. There, there is no workaround on this one. Okay, so here's the next question. Um, sorry if this was already covered, but with the salaries of employees directly involved with education or outreach be an eligible expense, how about the acquisition of equipment that would be used for education or outreach? That's a question as well. Okay, so for your um, your key, sounds like your key person that would be listed under key personnel. So on your SF four two four A and your project narrative, you want to outline those positions as key. So that is an eligible expense to answer your question. It is an eligible expense. You just want to ensure that the roles and responsibilities are clearly outlined in your project. Um, your I'm sorry, not your project narrative, your mm -hmm. budget narrative. Mm -hmm. Your budget narrative will not only speak to your budget. So if you say, okay, I need 50,000 to um, out to pay the salaries of the, of the key personnel, you're gonna total that salary for those 12 months, add that to your uh, SF-4248 under personnel services. And then on your budget justification, you're going to, detail those roles because key personnel have to be outlined. So if you're paying someone for, from the grant, it does have to be listed in your application. If not, you have to do a key personnel amendment before that individual is paid. Okay. All right. Here's the next question, I think. Well, at least on my list, it looks like it's the last one. So here it goes. I apologize but need clarification. On page four, under eligible projects, part, eligible project part C states, projects that support outreach about careers in the aviation maintenance industry to primary secondary and post-secondary school students or communities underrepresented in the industry, but you are saying primary students are not included. No, I didn't I didn't say primary schools were primary students were were not included. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what that, but that's the looks like the last question that has not been addressed in some way that's on my list. Okay, yeah, like, I think that goes to the el eligibility that the pilots is for high school students. Oh, so yes, yeah, so for pilot is specific to high school students. If you're talking about maintenance, that's where secondary, post secondary students are included so again you want to i don't know which which pro app uh which nofo you're looking at but if you're applying for pilot or if you're applying for maintenance that looks very different so please make sure whichever one you're applying for you look at that student criteria very closely okay the question you said indicate. that was the last question on your screen well on my list um yes that was the last wait wait one more Oops, oh, sorry. Wow. Here's one more. Please. Hmm. Um, someone asked for you to please review 
criterion three for maintenance, but it doesn't say anything after that. So I'm, I'm not sure if that was a question or a statement. Oh, it probably was a statement because uh, because in the um in the presentation, mm -hmm. I did not go over the remaining criteria for aviation um aviation maintenance okay. only because the criterion is literally the exact same that I had read on the previous slide. So yes. criterion one, two, and four are the same for all for all AWD programs. The only thing that differs in criterion for mm -hmm. both pilot and maintenance is criterion three. They are very specific and different. So if you are applying for either, just make sure you are drafting your proposal to speak to the criterion for that particular uh, DELFO, whether you're applying for pilot or you're applying for maintenance. Again, it just needs to speak directly to the criterion that is outlined in the NOFO. Okay, just for clarification, she sent in another statement that reads, there is a mistake in the first sentence. It is exactly the same as pilot. No, for the criterion for one and two is exactly the same, not for three. So again. Okay. okay. All right. That was the last, the other, um, oops. Okay. She says the NOFO has a mistake. Yeah. You both concurred with that, that it had a mistake in there. So understood. Um, the, do you know? how? Okay. So. Right now, the questions you've addressed them, and one that was really long, I thought I pushed it over to an answer live, but it's still sitting in my list. Sorry, need clarification. Um, these are repetitive questions in regards to the parts um, 147, in regards to the um, budget narrative as well, as far as spacing. So the list that I still have, the few I still have on my list are questions that were answered prior, previously. Okay. All right. Okay. Sounds good. So, well, then okay. this is going to um, end our presentation. And again, if you feel like you still need clarification or you have yet. additional questions, you can email us at awd-grants at faa.gov and Cynthia and I will get to you. We usually have a 24 hour turnover, but Cynthia is very, very prompt with answering questions. So you will receive a response from either she or I. Um, other than that, thank you for joining us and we look forward to reviewing your applications.